Dear students, today we shall be talking about the morphometric characters of fish. Before proceeding, it is my request to you all to like and subscribe my channel BioLearnia. Before knowing the morphometric characters, we should be having the knowledge about the morphology. What morphology is? Morphology, morphology is basically a branch of biology which deals with the study of the form and structure of organisms and their specific structural features. This includes the aspects of the outward appearance, shape, structure, color, pattern, size. This is all what we call it as the external morphology. Now, secondly, we also know external morphology by the name of isonomy. Isonomy is the external features of an organism, its appearance, its outward appearance. And secondly, we must be knowing about the internal morphology as well. Many a times when is when we say the internal morphology we are talking about the anatomy so if we are talking about the form and structure of the internal parts like bones organs or we call it as the internal morphology or anatomy we study the digestive system we study the uh, nervous system we study the excretory system but it is inside the organism that is why it is internal morphology or we call it as the anatomy so morphology is basically a branch of science which deals with the study of the form and structure of organisms and their appearance and secondly their specific structural features so it is all about the morphology now when we measure these very morphometric characters that very branch is called as the morphometry now we actually may be talking about the morphometrix morphometrix is derived from the greek word morph which means shape which means shape and metria metria it is the measurement so morphometry refers to the quantitative analysis of form that is a concept that encompasses size and shape now this very morphometry is performed on the organisms and are useful in analyzing their fossil records so on one hand if we require to know about the fossil records to analyze them we also undertake the morphometry we we also study carry on the morphometry to study the impact of mutations on shape developmental changes in form covariances between the ecological factors and the shape as well as estimating the quantitative genetic parameters of shape so morphometry is very much helpful to have an idea in the taxonomy as well now we will be today we shall be talking about the morphometric characters of a fish when we say morphometric characters we say the linear measurement of the body or its parts or any structure thereon it belongs to the subject of morphometry such as we study the length of the body we study the head length we study the fin length we study the gape width so whatever we study or whatever we measure which is the morphological character of a fish we actually are talking about the morphometric characters of a fish now the question arises what is the practical utility of the fish mor morphometry why we undertake this fish morphometry now fish morphometry helps to first it helps to identify fish accurately and completely it helps to fix identification characters of a fish it helps to determine the morphological differences between the sexes if any it also helps to determine the difference in the same species with 
which exist in different localities actually different species have an impact of the environment they live in so if the same species is living in one environment and the other individuals of the same species they are living in some other environment there is a little bit of difference so as to know about that very difference we undertake the morphometry so it also helps to differentiate between the fishes having the similar morphological features but they are not same many a times different fishes look similar but they are different species it also helps to know about those very fishes it also helps to it also helps to identify different stocks of the same fish species it helps to identify the different stocks of the same species as well now what are the requirements which are necessary for carrying out the morphometry of the fish many a times it is a very easy process but many a times we do require the scale and along with the scale many a times we do require the digital vernier caliper this is the digital vernier caliper uh, we uh, we open this its mouth and then we if we, um, the whatever organ we do want to measure it gives a reading on this very display so we can we can require magnifying glass we require forceps we require needle many a times so as to know about the or to open and um, just to tease the dorsal fins or the um, you can say mouth to our operculum or the eye so that we can easily measure them and we also obviously we require a fish specimen um, uh, which is to be measured now there are various morphometric characters various morphometric characters which can be measured so there are various characters which can be measured in a fish and those very character are external features those very external characters of a fish which can be measured they are actually called as the morphometric characters we do have the total length we do have the standard length we do have fork length we do have the uh, interdorsal space we do have the head length we do have the eye diameter we do have the pre orbital length we do have the um, um, anal fin length and many more so one by one we shall be talking about all these so first important one is the total length of the fish it is it is mostly in most of the books it is denot denoted by tl so it is a measurement of the body length from the tip of the jaw longest jaw for example this is the this is the longest jaw from the tip from the it, this very point to the tip of the caudal fin longest part of the caudal fin so this is the total length so for example in many cases many times this jaw can be longer than the upper jaw or the upper jaw can be longer than the lower jaw so it is it is the it is the longer one it is the longest one and many times this very fin can be larger and this can be shorter so it is up to the longest part of the caudal fin so total length from the longest jaw snout snout jaw to the longest caudal fin secondly we uh, it is it is the it is the standard length so the length of the snout to the origin of the caudal fin so rightly from this very point from the snout to the base of the or you can say origin of the caudal fin so this is the standard length it is just the base of the caudal fin so we we call it as the we call it as the standard length so from the uh, snout to the origin of the caudal fin it is the standard length now the fork length this is the point of the origin of the fork so from the snout up to this very point that is the origin of the fork or the bifurcation of the caudal fin where the caudal fin bifurcates it is called as the fork length then we do have the head length head length it is the measurement it is denoted by hl and it is the measurement or length from the snout to the posterior part of the operculum now rightly it is again rightly from this very snout up to the posterior part of the operculum so this is the this is the head length rightly from this point to this point so from the uh, from the um, snout to the posterior part of the operculum it is the head length now the snout length so it is the length from the snout to anterior most margin of the 
i so for example if maybe if we may be talking about the the uh, snout length it it is directly from the from this very point that is from the uh, length um, from the snout to the anterior most uh, uh, this is the anterior most margin of the eye orbit so anterior most margin of the eye orbit up to the snout it is the it is the snout length so it is called as the snout length then we do have the eye diameter so maximum eye length of the eye orbit are the maximum length of the eye orbit from the one margin from this very margin to this very margin it is called as the eye diameter so it is called the eye length or the eye diameter so one is interorbital length interorbital length is actually the distance between the orbits of the eyes distance between the orbits of the eyes so for example this is the this is the orbit of the one eye and this is the orbit of the second eye this is the distance between the two orbits so it is called as the interorbital length now there are many more characters which can be measured such as pre dorsal length it is we call it as the pdl pre dorsal length it is length from the snout actually every most of the characters they are measured from the snout so pre dorsal length length from the snout to the origin of the dorsal fin to the origin of the dorsal fin so it is called as the pdl or the or the uh, pre dorsal length so rightly from this very point to this very point it is the pre dorsal length then we do have the pre pectoral length pre pectoral length now what is pre pectoral length it is the length from the snout to the origin of the pectoral fin to the origin of the pectoral fin now this is the pectoral fin this is the pectoral fin so from the origin of the pectoral fin it is the ppl that is pre pectoral length from the snout to the origin of the pect pectoral fin so it is the ppl now pre pelvic length this is the pelvic fin so the length from the snout rightly from this very point length of the snout from this i may be using the pointer from this very point i will use the pen to the origin of the pelvic fin to the origin of the pelvic fin it is called as the pre pelvic length so it is ppel pre pelvic length so then we do have the pre anal length now this is the anal fin this is the anal fin so from the snout up to the origin of the anal fin to the this is the origin point of the anal fin an anal fin rightly from the snout up to the origin of the anal fin it is called as the pre anal length then height of the dorsal fin this is the dorsal fin. many times we do have the two dorsal fin and many times we do have the only one dorsal fin so this is called as the dorsal fin this is the dorsal fin of the fish so it is the height of the dorsal fin from the base of the origin that is rightly from this very point from the base of the origin to the end of the longest fin to the end of the longest fin so with the fin which is longest it is rightly from the origin up to the longest dorsal fin ray so longest dorsal fin ray up to the origin of the dorsal fin it is called as the height of the dorsal fin and similarly we do have the anal fin length so length from the origin length from the origin to the last anal fin ray to the last anal fin ray it is the anal fin length then we do have the body depth which is very much important so we measure the body depth it is the maximum vertical length of the body so maximum vertical length of the body to the deepest part so for example if we this this cannot be the body depth this cannot be body depth because here the depth is less and here also here again here again the body depth is less so it is the point where the depth is maximum so it is called as the body depth maximum vertical depth of the body or the deepest part of the body it is called as the body depth then uh, we, uh, there is one uh, point it is caudal depth it is the minimal so near the uh, caudal fin where the minimum distance or the mini minimum vertical length of the body is noticed it is called as the as the caudal depth and it is also known by the name of the caudal peduncle caudal peduncle then we do have the caudal length caudal length now what is caudal length it is simply 
total length minus standard length then there are some more characters which can be measured such as upper length of the upper lip length upper lip length so it is the curved length of the upper lip from one angle of the mouth to the another angle of the mouth for example this is the upper lip it is rightly measured from this very point from this very point to this very point but in a curved way curved way so it is measured in curved it is called the upper lip length similarly lower limb lip length is also measured in a curved manner so it is called as the lower lip length then we do have the horizontal um, horizontal mouth width it is directly the width from this very point this very point to this very point from the from the one end of the mouth uh, to the edge of the mouth to another edge of the mouth then we do have the vertical vertical mouth width when the mouth of the fish is opened and we measure its vertical its vertical um, width so it is also known by the name of the gape size gape gape width or gape size so we do have many uh, characters which can be measured in the fish we call them as the morphometric characters and all these very characters give us an indication about the individuality of a fish whether the fish belong to the same species or different species or what variation uh, is in between the species or intra species or the differences in the individuals of the same species living in the different environment so this is very helpful many a times uh, we do have some other terms um, also which can be measured such as nape such as nape we know it by the name of the back, back of the neck we also know it by the name of the back of the neck then we do have the breast uh, so it is uh, uh, it is the breast so many times we also know the uh, isthmus isthmus so there are the some uh, various other characters which can be measured but most of the characters such as total length standard length folk length interdorsal space uh, which lies between the first and the second dorsal space if there are two dorsal fins then we do have the we do have the eye diameter we do have the head length we do have the um, pre pectoral length pre dorsal length pre anal length um, the caudal length body depth caudal peduncle so we do have the many characters which can be measured but let us have a quick revision of uh, the morphology of the fish for example this is the this is now we know that this is the this is the head of the fish and this is the uh, this is the first dorsal fin this is the second dorsal fin this is called as the caudal fin this is called as the anal fin this is called as the pectoral fin this is called as the this is called as the uh, many times we do have the pelvic fins as well uh, this is the, the many times we do there is a later line present on the on the fish that we shall be dealing uh, later on in the later lectures but for today it is uh, you know, all for today and we knew about the morphometric characters of a fish thank you thank you very much next time we shall be dealing with the meristic characters of the fish